It has been just over a month since Microsoft Flight Simulator 20 took us into a new era of flight simulation with awesome visuals and better looking landscapes and airports thanks to Bing Maps and new technologies. Unfortunately, some integral parts have been lacking a bit of TLC, tender love and care, and developers have been busy addressing these shortfalls. One such area is the default pushback, which gives you two options in its current state. The first option requires the user to contact ATC initially and subsequently for each turn and then one more to stop. This method is not only very unrealistic but can also be very annoying. The other method is the traditional shift P which just gives you a straight pushback up to a distance determined by the user. Today, FS2 Crew has addressed that shortfall with Pushback Express version 1.0. Pushback Express in its earliest version takes advantage of the built-in vehicles and gives you the control of your own pushback in three different forms. Rudder control, button control, and distance. Pushback Express will work in FSX, P3D and MFS20 and it comes in four different languages and with 10 different accents. Let's take a closer look at Pushback Express and then get familiarized through a tutorial of each method. Unlike its predecessor UGCS, Pushback Express is an EXE file that lives outside of the sim. So to launch it, you simply just click on it or double click on it, depending on where you have it on your computer. You can only launch it when the sim has started, and it will advise you of this if you try launching it before. As you can see from the user interface, the guys at FS2 Crew have kept it as simple as possible so that the learning curve is not steep as it is designed for an easy up and go experience. You will find that if you hover long enough over the icons, it will tell you its associated action. This can be turned off in the settings if you fancy. On the left side of the user interface will be icons concerned with pre-flight and on the right side of the user interface will be icons concerned with the pushback. From left to right, we have the settings icon and we're going to go through this a bit more in detail shortly. We've got the jetway control, the main door control of the aircraft, and then these next two would be um, communication icons between the pilot and ground crew as part of the pre-flight process. And then finally, on the left side, you're going to have your pre-flight events. Once this is um, enabled, it will give you a 30-minute countdown, which allows you to set up the aircraft and do all your associated tasks to get you ready for pushback. The 30-minute can be sped up if you find that all of your activities that you needed to do before pushback has finished before the time has come down to zero. In that case, you just need to click it until you get to the time that you want it to come down to. If not for zero, say you want it to come down to five minutes, you can bring it down to five minutes, whichever is your, um, your preference. So let's have a look at settings. You have all your audio options here. You can lower and raise the volume um, of the application to suit your your preference again you've got your options for your speakers in here I have three different options I've got my monitor one which is this one here I've got my headset which I never use and then I have my subwoofer and surround sound by um, Logitech just across from that 
you're gonna have your language options where you can select which accent or which language you're gonna use both for the ground crew as well as for the pilot and as I mentioned earlier there are four different languages so you've got your German French English and Spanish and then you've got the 10 accents across um, those 10 regions the lock panel here is for you to keep this application on top always so if I just click here you're gonna see that it disappear and some people don't want to be doing this all the time so all you need to do is to select the lock panel and no matter did I select it ah here we go right and no matter what happens this panel will continuously be on up on top the any applications that you're using whether it's the same or anything else you're also going to see down here a couple of things that I should have mentioned so your active mode is the current mode that you have selected I'll show you again once we go back into settings how to change that and your hotkeys will be basically um, keys that you have assigned to do certain events now they will only work if this is not in focus so once you have this and uh, you've clicked on it that means it's in focus but if I click on the same even though that I can see it it means now that the panel is not in focus and I can use the, those hotkeys to trigger the events the hotkeys you can see here are populated by default but these can be changed if you prefer one thing that I would say about the force panel one this is associated with your gear down and in reality if you are on the ground and you inadvertently pulled up the gear the gear will still remain down but once the aircraft has reached a certain speed the gear will come up now what this means for you is if you have used this action once and not a second time so you use this to open the panel and then after that you're just going down and manually opening it what you have inadvertently done is you've raised your gear and you've left it raised so if you are flying an aircraft that has a very high takeoff speed like say the um, Airbus or the Boeing Dreamliner or 747 or the business jets or what have you if you're flying one of those aircraft this retract gear works before you actually get to your V1 speed and your rotate speeds which means that if you have used that button once and then you've used that hotkey once rather rather than twice it means that once you have hit that speed that the gear will automatically come up once pulled up you're gonna be in a situation where your gear has retracted but you don't have enough speed to take off so you need to be very mindful of that if you're using the force panel option start and finish with it don't start with the force panel and then finish with manual otherwise you're gonna find yourself in the situation that I have just mentioned now if you go down a little bit further you've got the pushback mode the pushback mode are these ones here weather control window buttons and distance there's another mode which is triggered by a hotkey and basically it's the equivalent of your shift P um, that you will be accustomed with with FSS and even if you're using this prior to using pushback express below you're gonna have an option to disable voices for towing yes you can tow as well as pushback if you are doing a tow as part of the pushback process I would say leave it as it is don't bother to disable it because it's still going to be considered a pushback even if there's a towing aspect of it 
if you're just towing then then I would say to disable it if you want to keep the emerging because the sound pack for the application is based on pushback it's not based on towing so if you want to have the actions matching the audio and vice versa for towing only you will disable the voices for the reverse left and right tug input this is going to be based on individuals preference me personally if I am doing a pushback I put myself as I'm the person in the plane not the person in the tug so if I use left rudder I expect my plane tail to go left and if I use right rudder likewise I expect, I expect my plane to turn its tail to the right this is going to be opposite if you are picturing yourself as the person in the tug and this is where this um, option comes into play for the rudder control I actually keep this unselected or deselected but when I am doing the window control I do select this and then down here will be your flight control sensitivity how sensitive you actually want it to be to your inputs um, so that's pretty much self-explanatory that's it there pretty much for the user interface what each icon does and a little overview of the settings so let's get right into the tutorial and we're going to start with the rudder control Welcome back. So we are now at Frankfurt International Airport. We are using the Airbus A320neo mod for demonstration purposes. So we not too long went through the icon information on what it stands for and we're now going to put this into practice. So at the moment you see there's an option here for pushback and then you see that there's an option here for the pre-flight events ah, he didn't even wait he just in a hurry to get out of there but um, we're gonna go through the pre-flight event one so that's the one I'm gonna highlight to you this is for persons as I have mentioned wanted to do stuff before they're actually ready to push back so this would be situations where they want to load passengers and baggage on the plane um, check through their flight plans whether manually inputting it or just um, double checking to make sure that the SIDS and the runways are relevant talking to ATC and stuff like that then they will go through the pre-flight events However, there is a type of simmer that sets up quite quickly and they just want to push back. So in that case, they won't use the pre-flight events, but they use the push back um, button straight away to get going. For the pre-flight event, you just push the button once and it gives you a 30 minute countdown at that time it is going to bring the jetway as you can see over to the aircraft and in the Airbus Neo the A320 Neo it will open the door once that has started you can work away and if you find that at some point like I am finding in this video right now that I am done I don't want to wait the 29 minutes that's remaining I just click on it to speed up the actions and you can speed it all the way down to zero or I can stop at the 25 second buffer and allow the application to just wrap up things now at this point it's pretty much where you'll be using the communication icons Some 
sometimes you can use this one a little bit early. You don't necessarily have to Cockpit use this one here. Höre. Einen Augenblick, bitte. Okay, ich warte. So what he had just um, said to the ground crew, if you're not familiar with German, is that he will be ready in a moment. And then this Cockpit one... Für Boden. Höre. Bitte den Walkaround bestätigen. Ja, Flieger sieht soweit gut aus, alle Türen und Panels sind zu. Keine Probleme, Stange ist dran, bin steckt. Wir sind ready für Pushback. And what that one did was ask for permission to pressurize the hydraulics. So you can use this at any time, it's up to yourself. Usually this one will be called just after the doors is closed. This one will be probably a couple minutes before the countdown finishes. But it's entirely up to yourself. There's no right or wrong way. It's based on what you yourself as the user Cockpit für want. Boden. Höre. Wir sind bereit für Push und Start. Verstanden. Dann bitte einmal die Parkbremse lösen. Okay. So I just click the push back button to start the pushback. The tug is going to stay where it is because he has given me an instruction in German to release my parking brake. Until I release my parking brake, nothing will happen. Whereas previously you would have seen if you're using the pushback feature in Microsoft um, Flight Simulator 20, that the minute that you call ATC for pushback, they start pushing back the aircraft even with the um, parking brake engage. Now you've seen that the push up button has been replaced with a red icon for stop and then there's an emergency stop as well. So this one would be the one that you would normally use which would pretty much tie up everything at the end and this one would be the one you would use say in a situation where we saw an aircraft just pushing back. Say for example I had started to push back not realizing that there was a plane behind me then I would use this one to kill all operations completely that way I don't want to have um, a delay in stopping as it is an emergency stop so what we're going to do is go into the cockpit start the parking brake and then we use the rudder control to come back to this yellow line and then square up Sorry guys, it's force a habit. I really don't do this often. Um, but somehow it feels wrong Park if I'm it pushing back and I don't Stand have push. and I don't have my beacon on and stuff like that. I'm just gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna adjust my cameras a few times just so that I can see where I'm pushing back as I'm going to be using my rudder for this one. I want to be as accurate as I possibly can. Now one thing I want to bring your attention to is that the tug does not have a big turn radius. So you want to time these turns according to the limitations of the tug itself. Alles frei, ihr könnt die Triebwerke anlassen. He's now told me that I can start the engines whenever I'm ready. I'm going to start gradually turning. And because it's rudder control, you might find that I'm going to be back and forth on them a little bit just so that I have what I would call a perfect pushback.
but this is your pushback so if you find that it's not looking as good as you might want it you can always go back and forth back and forth until you get it just right I oversteered a little bit so I'm just going to try to bring it back there and to speed up I just use my elevators and then I've gotten to where I want to be I click the action to stop you can see my speed dropping down three two one zero pushback is bad bitte die Bremse setzen it's told me to engage my parking brake parking Bremse setzt verstanden Okay, ich schwinge das raus, bin das weg, ähm, gute Triebwerkstraße, ich bin auf der rechten Seite mit dem Pin. Danke, bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. Danke euch, guten Flug, bis später. I have to say that is probably my favorite word in German, tschüss. And it's not because I'm rude, but goodbye just seems to be awesome. But there you have it, that's rudder control for you. Tug heads back home and we taxi out to the runway and be on our way so hey guys welcome back um, to the second part of the tutorial with the window buttons control we are currently at Amsterdam International Airport and the reason I've chosen this airport is because it's one of the few places or probably the only place I've actually seen a push and pull incorporated in a pushback and that's exactly what we are going to be doing today now unfortunately my sim has just been updated so I've lost all my liveries and I haven't had time to re-download them so we're going to be using the default looking liveries for aircrafts for the rest of the tutorials now in the rudder control tutorial I would have gone through in detail what the icons on the left side of the user interface is and also what's in settings I'm not going to go through that again so if you have missed um, that previous tutorial and you're interested in more detail as to what these do then the link is in the description below and you can always pop into that so what we're gonna do is go straight into the, the pushback and then to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. Talk a we are ready for pushback and engine start. About Roger, the release the parking brakes, extra please. icons that you're actually seeing here, which you would have seen in the rudder tutorial. Now, the two that you would have seen in the rudder tutorial was the normal stop, which um, pretty much completes the process of the pushback and then gives you instructions as to put on parking brakes and stuff like that. Then you're going to hand signals. The other one would be the emergency stop in case you had to stop obviously quicker than you had expected for whatever reason then you use that to kill the complete operation. The directional buttons here will be different because you would have had your riders to do this now you're using your mouse to actually use these. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about these buttons here um, starting with the directional ones with the directional buttons if you click one it does not go back to neutral like a steering wheel or like the yoke on a plane it's going to continue in that direction until it gets input from you again so if say for example you're turning left going back then it's going to continue left until you click straight and the same would apply for straight it's going to continue straight until you click something again and if you're going right it's going to continue right unless you give it another instruction for the other three icons here there's increase speed decrease speed and then hold current speed this is a bit interesting because normally 
you might want to increase the speed and you might think that when you increase the speed it's going to go up one click and then maintain that speed that is not the case with pushback express so you need to be mindful of that for two reasons and it depends on exactly what your action you're doing that it will vary so if you use the increased speed when you are doing a pushback you're going to increase the speed that you're pushing back obviously and it's going to continue going up in increments until it gets to the maximum speed that it can push back at now because the turn radius with the tug is not that big if you have too high a speed you're going to find that your turns are going to be messy it's not going to turn as sharp as it would if it is at a lower speed like how things are in general the faster something goes the wider, wider the angle is that it turns at the slower it goes the neater the angle is with the decreased speed now like the increased speed if you don't hold the speed when you get to the speed that you want is going to continue decreasing but it is not going to stop on zero so when you're pushing back you're going to have a positive speed if you decrease the speed and don't give it any input to hold the speed it is then going to go on the negative spectrum and then you're going to be doing a pull rather than a push so that's how you're able to do pulls um, in the pushback process you need to let the speed go on to the negative side and then you're able to do a pull but you also have to remember that if you let it go on the negative side you still need to stop it when it gets to the speed that you're comfortable at by using the 50 icon which is the hold speed now a bit more on the pull aspect of it and I'm going to demonstrate this to you when you are pulling the aircraft because you're now on the negative side of the spectrum everything is reversed as it pertains to speed so what you would have used to speed up is now slow and what you would have used to slow down is now speeding up I'll say it again if you are doing a pull this icon here usually means increased speed but this only increased speed when you are pushing back if you're pulling this now becomes decreased speed likewise decreased speed now means you're increasing your speed once you are doing a pull and again once you get to the speed that you're comfortable at then you need to hold the speed otherwise it's going to continue increasing or decreasing depending on which option you had pushed on so let's put it into practice shall we parking brakes released pushing back Now I have my controls reverse as I wanted it to be like if I'm actually in the aircraft. So in this case, when I push right, the nose goes left, the tail goes right. Sorry, when I push left rather. clear behind and you can start your engines at your discretion. So you see I'm using 
the directional buttons but then I am going back to straight once I've gotten enough turn that I wanted. Now if I don't use the straight button he's going to continue in that turn and I don't want that. So that's the pushback aspect of it. Increase speed, 5 knots, 6 knots, 7 knots, hold. And it will continue at that. Decrease speed, 7 knots, 6 knots, 5 knots, 4 knots, 3 knots, 2 knots, 1 knot, 0, and now we are actually pulling. Hold the speed up 4 knots to decrease now I'm going to use increase have it at 3 knots now and there you have it the push the pull and the inverse of the controls once you've gone into the pull aspect of it and we are happy with our position here so we would ask it to stop Pushback complete, set parking brakes please. Parking brakes set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the left side with the pin. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks, have a good flight, see you later. He's finished, he's gonna head back home. I'm gonna taxi out to my runway, take off, and have a great flight. So guys, that's two down and one to go. I just want to say that for the rudder and the window button options, you can do towing. However, for the next one that we're about to do, which is the distance method, you're not able to do towing in. For the rudder option, if you wanted to tow, you need to have a uh, joystick to aff affect your speeds otherwise the speed will run away from you anyways on to the next and we will be back with the window one and now for the last option in pushback express we've been through the rudder control we've done the window control and now we're going to do the distance one so the way the distance one is basically is you have limited control on your pushback. This is going to be mainly for very long straight pushback lines where you might want to make a turn at the very end. So if you go into settings for this one, I've already selected distance and then you'll see that I have a slider here where I can choose how long or short. I want the pushback distance to be. It's in meters, not feet. Now this is going to take a bit of guesswork because unless you have a scale to measure the, let me just move that out of the way, to measure the distance between here and there, it's always going to be guesswork. The way that I do this is 
I set it for around 130 meters and I just let the plane push back until um, I want to make my final turn. Now it's not always going to be that you need to make a turn sometimes it might be just a straight pushback and then you're on your way now you've got the option here to choose if you want to be straight back turn left turn right and then the you get one chance at putting input for a turn and that's with your ailerons um, you can either select that or deselect it I keep the ailerons selected because I don't know how accurate this is in terms of my estimation of where I am right now at the gate in comparison to where I want to be and just like the other pushback options it starts the same way cockpit to ground push back. go ahead flight tech we are ready for pushback and engine start Roger release the parking brakes please you go in release your parking brake parking brakes released pushing back the tug does its work and basically you let it run the full course and it will make its turn at the end or if you find that you need to make a turn before you just use your ailerons to make that turn before but as you can see my guess was way out at the moment we are at 27 meters and I put in 130 meters so to avoid you going all the way back and you here, can start your engines at your discretion. I am just going to coach it, coach it, sorry, to start its turn long before I get there. By turning my aileron. So rather going the 130 meters and then made the turn, he's now made a turn and completed the turn around 60 meters. Now once you've put in that input once with the aileron, you're no longer able to put in any more input. So because it's starting to go a little bit Push off back the complete. line, Set parking brakes, please. I've stopped it here. Parking brake set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right hand Have side with the pin. Yeah. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks. Have a good flight. See you later. And as we say in Barbados, that's all she wrote. So there you have it, guys. We've been through the three different options for the Pushback Express by FS2 Crew Virgin 1. We've done the rudder control. We've done the Windows button control, my favorite. And now we've just finished up with the distance control. Now these are not exhaustive. You can use them interchangeably every other airport, however you fancy. Um, but it does bring a bit more control and immersion as it relates to the pushback. If you had to do the pushback using ATC, you've got to request pushback to move from the gate. You've got to request pushback to make a turn. And you've got to request pushback to make another turn. And like I said in at the beginning of the video, it's not only unrealistic, but it becomes quite annoying, especially if it's something that you have to do a couple turns in, and then you're still dealing with setting up the um, starting the aircraft you might be talking to ATC so it becomes a bit annoying and that's where FS2 crew pushback express comes into play gives you more control over the pushback and keeps the immersion at a high um, level 
I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial I am got I've got the links in the description for the different parts if you want to go back and revise anything I've also got the link for FS2 crew where you can actually pick up your product until next time take care have a good day and see ya